Ashley Sorokis. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist born and raised here in Chatham and practicing in Chatham. We're going to talk about how to eat healthy while saving time and money. And this is a mystery to most people. And as a nutritionist, it was to myself, I didn't realize until I had my son how much time I wasted just lazily going around doing my cooking and thinking I had all the time in the world. So questions for you. Do you want to eat healthy but don't know where to start? Or have you tried to eat healthy before but life just gets in the way? That's, we've all fallen off the wagon at some point or another. Do you think that eating healthy has to be expensive and time consuming? This is a very common myth that we're going to talk about today as well. So what you're going to learn, you're going to learn what is your why for eating healthy. This is the most important part because you're not going to stick to anything unless you know your why. And we're going to talk about why the why is more important than the how. So we're also going to talk about the how and I'm going to teach you how to save time and money while you're eating healthy. But most of the presentation is actually going to be on the why. So what's your why? Most of the time eating healthier is I want to be thinner. Another very common reason is at the end of the day or during the day I'm actually in physical pain or I can't sleep at night because I'm in pain, I have acid reflux or my joints hurt or something like that. Third reason, I want to stay healthy for my kids and my family and I want to be around for a long time. So these are the three most common reasons for wanting to eat healthy that I've come across in my five years of nutrition practice. But if those reasons were enough, wouldn't you already be eating? Be eating healthy and wouldn't you already be thin? Wouldn't you already be energetic and wonderful and life would be perfect? And the reason that these things don't work is because at the end of the day we all just want to be healthy and happy. We want to be happy because we think that when we're thinner, when we're healthier, when we're richer, when our debt's paid off, when we're retired, all of these things we think that we're going to be ha happier because at the end of the day, we're going to have less to worry about. As women, we worry about everything. And I'm going to tell you about my story and why I have reasons to worry. But every single person here has a reason to worry, whether it's about yourself or your spouse or your parents or your children or your money, any of those reasons. There's always going to be something to worry about. And these are always reasons why we fall off the way and we go back to eating the way that we were before and we don't have any energy to keep making the healthy changes that we need to make to get to the life that we really want. So my why story, I thought I had it all figured out. What I've learned is that when you think you have everything figured out in your life, that's when God or the universe or the creator or Allah or whatever that you believe in that's when it's going to give you a lesson, a big lesson to teach you that you don't know everything and you don't have it all figured out. So I'm a self-professed control freak. I like to have control over my little life. My detour number one, I left Chatham. I went to University of Waterloo and I got my Bachelor of Science in Geophysics. Sounds very important, it's not really that good, but I was going to go do my PhD in the States. I had a full scholarship to Arizona State University. I was going to go, I was going to be a professor and do all these important things. And then I got really sick. And it took about a year, a year and a half to figure out that it was due to food allergies. So I found out that I was sensitive to wheat and gluten, dairy, eggs, chicken, bananas, blueberries, and some other things. So you can imagine that it took me some time to figure out what I could eat again. So I was the typical university student. I subsisted on Wendy's, mac and cheese, Subway, everything else that wasn't healthy for me. So I had to teach myself how to eat again. And what I realized is when you have limitations to how you want to eat, whether it's because you want to lose weight or because you can't eat those things, you need someone to guide you on the way. You make a lot of expensive mistakes along the way and you make a lot of time consuming mistakes along the way. So I went back to school to become a registered holistic nutritionist. And I got my debt paid off and my husband and I of three years said, let's have a baby. And I, being a health practitioner, thought I'm going to have, you know, my pregnancy is going to be wonderful and I'm going to have this wonderful home birth and it's going to be all natural. And from day one, pretty much of being pregnant, I was sicker than a dog. I hate taking medication. I had to take Diclectin every single day of my pregnancy up until the day that our son was born. 
I did no cooking, I could not go to the grocery store, I couldn't write my blog about food, I couldn't do anything because I felt so sick. I thought, when he's born, then life will be fine again because I won't be pregnant and yes, I'll have a newborn. You know, typical first time mom. I don't know anything, but you know, life's gonna be fine. I'm gonna have all this time, it's gonna be great. Detour number three. October 6th of 2012 is when my son was born. And I'm just going to warn you that if you are squeamish, um, the next picture might make you cry. It definitely made me cry when I first saw it. So what you need to know is we went from planning a all natural home birth to having an emergency C-section. My son was rushed down to London to the uh, Children's Hospital within six hours to have major surgery. And the next thing after that was the next 48 hours are critical and we don't know if he's gonna pull through or not. So, I had to stay in Chatham because I had had a C-section and my husband went down with my son to London. And the first picture that I ever saw of my son was this one. And so there's something about seeing your child that said I wasn't gonna cry, that you realize how important your life is and how you need to make it count. So whether or not this has happened to you or whether or not it's happened to someone that you love, we all have a reason to want to make our lives better and happier and make every minute count. So, we, uh, my son was born with intestinal complications, which is pretty ironic because as a holistic nutritionist specializing in food allergies, I deal with intestinal malabsorption all the time. So, it's kind of funny that I've now seen intestines actually on the outside of someone's body. Um, so, we went through the initial surgery I was recuperating from C-section when I got down to London. We lived with my sister-in-law for a month uh, before we realized that Ben was gonna go back to work. I needed to be closer to the hospital. Um, so I moved into the Ronald McDonald house, um, which we stayed there for 129 days at the hospital. So we came home on February 12th of this year when he was about four and a half months. And so I had no control over what I could eat with food allergies. Um, they lovingly at the Ronald McDonald House, which not a big proponent of McDonald's, but a big proponent of the Ronald McDonald House. So please give if you ever have it in your heart to do that. Um, but every night they cook a homemade meal for all the families that stay there. So 34 families, they have a full meal spread. Most of the time it is not Ashley Nutritionist approved. So I had to deal with having no control in my kitchen, having to deal with being in the hospital for eight hours a day, having to deal with doctors who want to do things with my son that I would not have made those choices, but you, ha you do it, you just have to. You don't really have a choice at that point. So this is him at six months old. So he is better. He has a colostomy bag, <laughs> he has applause if you want to. Um, he has a colostomy bag still, but we are actually going in on May the 2nd to have that reversed. And so he should have no tubes, no bags, no IV, no monitors, no nothing, which is amazing and a complete miracle. And I wanted to put that, and he's here somewhere. He's sleeping, supposed to be. Um, so this is my why. This is my why for realizing that I want my life to not be A, spent in the kitchen or at the grocery store, but us as women feel like we have to take care of everyone else in our lives. And that whether that be a spouse or a child or parents or work or any of those things, we never have enough time for ourselves to make ourselves happy. So what I want to help you figure out is what is your why? The why isn't I want to be thinner, I want to be richer, I want to any of those things. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our activity sheet out here, and I've done this exercise. It sounded like the simplest exercise in the world, but it is so powerful, and you can apply this to anything. For me, it's not when I'm thin, it's for me, it's when I'm healthy. So, dealing with the firstborn, you know, your body's doing weird things that it didn't do before, so for me, it's when I am healthier. So I want you to write down your when I am, whatever your normal excuse is for not living and doing the things that you wanna do right now. So when I'm thinner, when I have more money, when I'm retired, when I have more time, what is your go-to excuse that you use for not doing the things that you really tell yourself that you want to do? So I'll give you a second to write that down. 
And then underneath of it, you're going to write down the things that finish that sentence. So when I'm healthy, I'm going to travel to Paris, France, because I've always wanted to go there. So we're going to write down, I'm going to travel the world, or I'm going to go dancing, or I'm going to wear a two-piece bikini, or whatever it is that you always have at the end of that sentence that you've always wanted to do and that you have a passion to do. It doesn't have to be a huge thing. It can be. When I have more time, I want to read a book. I want to spend five minutes not freaking out about my children pulling something off the wall. Like it can be the simplest of things that you've ever imagined. And what I want to help you realize is that those things are the reasons for you to eat healthier. Those are the reasons for you to want to be more energetic. It's not to be thinner. That's, while that is awesome to look great in clothes, it's the, the looking forward and thinking that we're not going to have stress when we're thin. We're not going to worry about food all the time. We're not going to count points. We're not going to count calories. We're not going to figure out how many fat grams we're eating. It's about having space in your head to get to the things that are going to make you happy. Because if you're not happy, everyone around you picks up on that, and your life isn't going to move forward in the way that you picture when you get to the end of your life you wanted it to look. So I know you're screaming at me in your head, oh, it's all well and good. I'm going to you know, take all this time and go to Paris and wear a two-piece. But where am I going to find the time? Like I go from the minute that I wake up in the morning until the minute that I go to sleep at night. I'm constantly on the run. I'm doing all of these things. Where, you know, part of my friend, where the hell am I going to find the time? Second of all, where the hell am I going to find the energy? I'm exhausted. I'm tired from doing all of these other things. And that is my job as a holistic nutritionist to teach you that you have to eat the right types of foods. You cannot subsist on drive-throughs and packed and boxed goods at the grocery store, even though they're easy and they may be quick to make, they're not going to get you to where you want to go. And when you're not where you want to be, you are unhappy and miserable and not in a good place. So what it all comes down to is meal planning. And meal planning, your probably back just went up, your hair went, you're like, meal planning, oh my god, that sounds like the most boring thing. I do not want to do that. It's going to take more time out of my already crazy busy day. And it is not a fun, sexy subject. Meal planning is not fun. It's not fun. I do it for a living. It's not my most favorite part of my job. But what I like to do is to share healthy recipes and to help you figure out how that can fit into your schedule. Because if I spent my entire day trying to meal plan for my clients, it would look like this. I would spend 10 hours making a meal plan for them, and I'd send it to them, and they'd say, well, on Tuesday, Johnny has soccer practice, so I can't make that on Tuesday. So I'm gonna move that to the next week, and then you know, back and forth, back and forth. No one can do your meal plan but you. Kind of like no one can take care of your kids but you, because at the end of the day, it comes down to you. So how do we make meal planning sexy and a sexy subject that's fun to talk about? Well, we talk about the benefits of it. It's going to get you healthier. It's going to get you energetic. It's going to get you to the place where you need to be physically to do the things that you want to do to get you happy. It's going to save you money. Who doesn't want to save money? I also work at a bank, so you know, money is kind of a fun subject for me. And it's going to save you time, because again, if it doesn't save you time, it doesn't give you any benefits, you're not going to want to keep doing it. So, this is how you meal plan. And you don't need to write all this stuff down. It is already done for you in a free report on my website. So all you need to do, and I'll have the picture up after, is go to my website, put in your name and your email address, and you'll get my whole meal plan. There's recipes on my website that you can put in your meal plan. There's lots of stuff in there for you to look at. So these are very simple steps, but sometimes it's the simple things that need to be laid out for you to go, oh, well, I don't know why I wasn't doing that. I can do that. And in the beginning, it's going to take you a little bit of time to get in the rhythm of how you can do it. But investing that half an hour before you go to the grocery store is going to, A, help you get through in and out of the grocery store quicker because you're not you know, getting to the checkout and you're waiting there for 20 minutes because it's Saturday and it's a zoo. And then you're like, oh, I forgot the eggs. I have to go back and get the eggs, oh my god. So that's the first way. You're also not going to be making three or four trips to the grocery store each week. The money aspect comes about because you're not going to be 
getting to the end of the week and throwing out that bunch of kale that you bought that you're like, what the hell is this? I don't know how to cook it. Now I feel horrible. They're starving children and I'm throwing out food. And then you feel bad about yourself. So it's about using what's in your fridge, but you have to make a plan to use it. So step one is get a calendar. So whether it's on your phone, whether it's on the wall, whether it's a big chart that your children or your husband or someone else helps you to fill in, that would be wonderful to get your family involved in it as well because we also feel like we're doing it all by ourselves. Step two, you want to schedule in the non-negotiables. The example I just used when I send my meal plans to my clients and they say, Johnny has soccer practice. Well, first of all, I don't know Johnny has soccer practice and did you even remember Johnny has soccer practice? Well, we have a million things in our heads. So when we write them down, we can make that space to be happy, have the time, not be stressed, all of those wonderful things that are going to happen in our life. So we need to put in our schedule, yoga, the dentist appointment, we got to go for, you know, all of these different things. We need to put those in our schedule. Then we need to figure out how much time realistically do we have. We might have the night off, but do we want to spend a half an hour in the kitchen, 15 minutes, an hour? You know, realistically, let's start off and do things simply. So let's put in 15 minutes. So we're not going to pick a recipe that takes an hour to cook because that's just setting yourself up for failure. And then we're going to fill in those blanks with the recipes that are going to fit in the nights when we can cook. Step five is where we're killing two birds with one stone. I don't cook every single night. I have a six month old. I might think I'm going to cook every night and then it's like he won't go to sleep or he's screaming or whatever and Ben's on from work and you know and then it gets to eight o'clock and you're like okay let's just go and get takeout or the drive through because that's always the answer not the answer to get to where we want to go, which is our healthier, energetic, happy you. So if you have a Saturday or a Sunday, you get home from the grocery store, you're cutting up vegetables for a recipe anyways, why don't you just double it? It doesn't take, it takes a quarter of the amount of time to just keep chopping, have the veggies already cut up. What I do is I cook crock pot meals that make three or four servings or three or four meals worth, and I freeze them in individual single size servings. So all that I have to do is take them out from the freezer, I don't even defrost them, I just put them in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes while I go and do other things, and everything's done. Same thing when you're cooking things like brown rice, things that take a lot of time to cook, where you're like, I wanna have stir fry, but brown rice is more nutritious, and it takes 50 minutes to cook instead of minute rice, which is 10 minutes. Well, if we have it already sitting in the freezer, no problem, you just pull it out, throw it in, done. Then we want to do our speed shopping. So we want to look at our recipes that we picked for the week. We want to write down all of the ingredients. And then we're going to go to our fridge or our cupboard and we're going to cross out what we don't need. We already have ketchup, we already have canned tomatoes, whatever. And then we're going to split it up into sections at the grocery store. So again, you're not going back and forth to the sections and you're running all around, except for the superstore. They just changed their store around in case you haven't noticed and it's driving me insane. I used to know where everything was. I don't anymore. So you leave for four and a half months and you come back and things are the same. So you want to have your grocery list in the sections, in produce, veggies, fruits, dairy, meat, aisles. So that way you don't miss anything and you're only making the one trip. It's one hour or less, one hour if it's a Saturday, 30 minutes if it's a weeknight. And it's all done for you. Like I said, my website, you can go to two different spots. If you're going to it from your home computer, it'll look all nice and pretty like this. And you can just put it on the bottom, your name and your email address. You'll get your whole PDF report. You have it electronically. You can print it out again and again. You can put in your grocery list again and again. So it's all done for you. Just save it with all of your regular ingredients in it. Then you don't have to waste the time writing milk and butter and eggs every single week. Also, if you're going from your smartphone or your iPhone or your iPad, you can do it here if you want. You just click on the top where it says your free guide and then there'll be another box. You put in your email and then it'll take you right to the link and you'll get a nice email from me and a link to all the recipes of what to put in there. So what we need to realize is that, and we already know this as women, and it sucks sometimes because we feel like we're all alone, but at the end of the day, the only person who can make your life count is you. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend it in the kitchen. I'm not a professional chef, but I don't want to spend it in the kitchen. I want to spend it enjoying time with friends, actually relaxing with family, taking time to be present. And the only way that you can do that is to open up the headspace, open up your schedule so that you can have time to make you happy, so that everyone else around you is happy as well. So that 
is my presentation. This is my website. Please go to it. There's a ton of free stuff on there. Email me or call me with any questions that you have, and I hope that you can go forward and be the happiest that you can be.